Inkedink, 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 Wow!
Okay. We're going to start over again. Oh, I got you. Oh, I don't got you. Okay. Okay, it's the middle of the night. Here we are. And uh, you want me to translate de portes de gato into uh, in inglese? Okay, um, yeah, the middle of the night. I don't know, maybe um, Café Bustelo. For the middle of the night jitters, if you want them. Okay, so, um, you got me up to do a new show, and, and, and you got your occupy you got your PJs on I got my PJs on uh, kind of and uh, you got your where the wild things are slippers and if we leave those there maybe uh, Walter will come up on the table um, and do a little feather dusting so it's the middle of the night and uh, you want to do you want to do s sports first no, this, this is not the way you normally do news you normally with news you do the um, do everything else, and people hang around and wait and put up with all the, uh, the, the, the worthless banter of, of a news show, and uh, then hang around for the uh, the last five or ten minutes, and they get their sports for the day. Do you want to lead off in sports, huh? Okay. So, um, what sports do you want to um, lead off with? As if I didn't already know. Okay, he said, um... <laughs> said uh, about a little boxing and I do not mean boxing day we already did that show back the day after Christmas um so boxing okay um now I guess what you want me to talk about, since you have it written down here, is that um, everybody seemed to be down on the uh, recent uh, mayweather uh, Pacquiao uh, match uh, in Las Vegas um, because um, it didn't meet up to uh, most boxing fans' expectations. And the boxing fans' expectations are pretty similar to the expectations of people that go to um, car races. Pretty much want to see some blood and gore. Car race fans, they want to see smash-ups and crash-ups and mutilations and parts of cars and even cars even better cars going flying into the stands that's what makes that's that's what makes um, auto racing so much fun apparently and with boxing apparently um, if the boxing match doesn't have its mandatory uh, requirement it's requisite of uh, blood and gore and uh, people lying on the ground and uh, um, no, they don't use machetes in boxing. That's that, that one where they go into a cage and, and one comes out alive and the other one doesn't. Or at least one comes out with with um, one arm left on, on them as opposed to the loser who has zero arms left and usually cut off at the knee too. So, yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was, it seemed to be kind of disappointing based on what um, a lot of boxing... Uh, aficionados were saying they, um, they uh, didn't have any uh, well, well you know you had you had uh, you had uh, Mayweather who, who apparently seems to be um, the best at um, deftly eluding um, punches since a guy named uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, now, if you recall, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, except in the match against Roberto Duran, the uh, the brawl in Montreal in 1972. I think that was the Olympic year uh, for Montreal. And uh, Leonard uh, Duran apparently cut off the ring. Of course, I think he got his way, and the ring was actually about um, 10 by 10 as opposed to the normal uh, 12 by 12 or 14 by 14 or 16 by 16 or something of that nature. But at any rate, Duran did a great job of cutting off the ring and basically pummeled Leonard the whole fight, won a decision against the, uh, the champion, and uh, Leonard, Leonard, Sugar Ray Leonard had a, a pretty amazing career. And 
alluding back to uh, Mayweather, Roger Mayweather, he, Sugar Ray Leonard was, was exceptional at avoiding punches, at slipping punches, at uh, backing up, maneuvering, and actually could throw a pretty good punch backing up, which was just unusual. Usually boxers fight coming in. They don't fight backing up. Usually when they're backing up, there's nothing going on, and then one catches the other and they go into a clinch. But this fight was a little bit better than that and a little bit different than that. And, and, I'm, and Basil says, um, <laughs> said um, it actually was a great fight, in his opinion. Because, you know, I mean, there's two elements of boxing. There's the hitting and there's the defensive. And, uh, okay, point well taken, Basil. It was a... Mayweather is amazing at avoiding punches, and it's not just he was—he wasn't running away. He would be there, and and then in would come Pacquiao and throws throws a punch, and bang! Mayweather slid to his left, to Pacquiao's right, and uh, just did it over and over and over again. And then would come back in and get a couple punches in on uh, Pacquiao, and uh, Pacquiao would uh, come in and and try his best to um, to take the fight to uh, Mayweather and. Uh, there would go Mayweather, cutting to his left. Pacquiao couldn't find him. Just um, so it was, um, it had that element of defense that you normally don't. It's sort of like watching a football game where the final score ends up being ten to seven. You say to yourself, well, "Where's all the action?" Well, the action was on defense, and it took uh, it took a great defensive fighter like Mayweather to avoid being um, being tracked down by Pacquiao and, and, and hit. Pacquiao basically, I, I think he landed about 8% of his punches, and uh, none of them of any consequence. I mean, I think he stung him one time, but that's that's about it. It really wasn't much of, a, of an offensive fight. It was a great defensive fight, and boxing fans really, you know, well, I'll let Basil say it for himself. <laughs> Meow. Meow. Said you guys are uh, idiots for um, for not appreciating a good defensive boxing match. The same way you're idiots for ignoring uh, the defensive uh, aspect of professional football, uh, professional baseball, uh, defense in basketball. I mean, we had we had the ghost of Vince Lombardi on one of our shows. And either either the ghost of Vince Lombardi or the ghost of Mrs. Vince Lombardi you said something about the best uh, the best offense is a great defense. And uh, Lombardi built a championship team called the Packers around having great defenders. He uh, kept a balance of defense and offense. He allowed the offense time to um, to prepare themselves on the sidelines and. Uh, but not too much, though. They needed to get back in there fairly quickly and get an offense again. And the Packers were um, one of the dynasties. And uh, pity the day for the New York Giants that uh, Vince Lombardi left them to go to become the head coach of the Packers. Well, of course, also a fellow by the name of Tom Landry left the Giants as a, as a coach, assistant coach, and uh, went and started up a dynasty in, in Dallas. Or as... Um, Basil calls it Dal Ass. I guess you got to put the asterisk in there along with the uh, two S's. So, um, there you go. So, um, what more do you want to say about this? I mean, I've got the, I've got the cheat sheet here. So, um, you've got... Hmm. So you had a boxing match that was um, that was uh, strong on on defense and only not strong on offense because it was so strong on defense. And uh, Mayweather just uh, did what he had to do. Pack way out. Said at the end that he honestly thought he fought a great fight. He thought that um, as able as he was, never. To get in and land some punches, he he took the fight to uh, to win Mayweather, but but I guess I guess in fact he didn't because Mayweather didn't allow him to take the fight to Mayweather. Um, and that's it. And now on to the rest of the news. Oh, okay. Hold on. 
You got a new uh, corporate um, advertiser. Catwoman. To the greatest thief of them all. And uh, these are not like the old days with comics, where you had um, comic book characters looking fairly demure and covered up and kind of um, modest looking. This babe's got it all hanging out. And uh, a skirt that just begs you to kind of look up it a little bit. Okay, and there she is, and uh, she's doing all kinds of devilry. And oh, and look at that. Speaking of, um, speaking of seeing it all, look at, look at Batman. You can see Batman. Batman's got muscles on top of muscles on top of muscles, and he's got a crotch that looks like it's about ready to um, kill or destroy any victim, any um, any bad guy he can get a hold of. Okay. Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo. C2E2, and I'm not sure what that exactly means, but, uh, huh, sorry, we missed it. April 25th to 27th, 2014, McCormick Place. Guests include Jason Fabak, Dan Jurgens, Aaron Cooter, Dustin Yen, Greg Panic, Jeff Parker, Scott Snyder, Charlie Sewell, Peter Tomasi, James Tinian the Fourth, and a Batman that was ready to uh, ready for anything apparently. And uh, speaking of um, speaking of Oswald Cobblepot, he's um, he's around somewhere, I guess. We'll get him on the show a little bit more as time goes on. So. Okay. All right. Now we'll do some ads. Okay. Uh, P.A. and W. Root Beer. It's that extra letter that causes it to be so special. And how do we know that Basil prefers P.A. and W. Root Beer? With that extra letter added in? Just look at his cat pan. And, uh, you know your Tootsie Roll's not here anymore. Could you have... Oh, you didn't. Basil said he was going to deliver it to a friend of his over in Newtown as a gift. And uh, apparently he has. So, um, let's see. Well, let's go down the list. Let's do some more. We got um, Cafe Bustelo. Envasado al Vacchio, back compact. Uh, Cafe Espresso Molido, Espresso Ground Coffee. And here's the kicker. El mejor café se disfruta en compañía. You got friends over? Bring this stuff out. They'll hang around as long as you want to. Well, until you bring out the tea, then they'll um, then they'll then they'll skedaddle. But as long as this coffee is out, the best coffee is enjoyed with company. Okay. Are oh, we supposed to leave it out? Okay. Okay. Um, this table is getting to be. Pretty ridiculous. Oh, hey, little little wave from uh, little uh, little Jeffrey Peterson. Come on, Jeffrey, be a sport. Be a. There you go. There you go. Oh, now face the audience. Okay, that's better. Okay. Um. 15 ball, visible by all cats everywhere, and the Costco size version of 15 ball, and it seems counterintuitive, but 12 ball, which is larger than 15 ball, but, you know, Costco, 15 ball, jumbo size, 12 ball. Um, let's see, uh, is it time for, uh, hey, I bet it's about time for, uh, Cinco de Junio. Does that mean we're going to get some call-ins from um, from Ted Cruz and uh, Marco Rubio? Or perhaps Marco will let his uh, father uh, Rubio, 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 Rubio del Rubio call in form. Time will tell. 
so, um, no work at cat. Okay. Um, okay. Basil's angling for another, um, he wants a second life with, um, not Abbott Labs, uh, the maker of Desitin. But he wants, uh, he's taking a shot at Wabbit Labs. And, uh, Wabbit Labs is apparently also out in Chicago. And, uh, Basil, Basil says that he can make some, uh, cha-ching off them because they've got a new, a new medicine out. Um, and it's in honor of a former Republican presidential candidate from 2012 who hasn't gotten back in. We can't name him by name because that would violate campaign laws. Now, if we gave him a million dollars out of our left pocket and $10 million out of our right pocket and didn't tell anybody we'd given it to him, well, that's allowable by modern-day campaign laws. Thank you, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts and the rest of your um, corporate gangsters. Um, so, Rabbit Labs, um, new product, um, Little Seizure Pizza, and uh, that's that's what we're angling for. So, if you're watching out there in Chicago at Abbott Labs, um, it's a Friday night, you're home, so you should be watching us on uh, YouTube or on uh, Facebook, Basil Buddha Cat, where you find Basil Buddha Cat Presents exclamation point. Now, okay. Politics, okay. Usually the politics are the stuff we get into like in the middle of the show, not not at at the end slash beginning of of a, of the news broadcast. But let's let's go for it. So we had this British election and uh, the Tories pulled a little flim flammery and it's it's good political uh, Good political snarkiness and smartness and uh, acuity on their part, but they, um, hey, ooh, that one's gone. Can we do it? Okay. We're also angling for the avocado account, and what better time to angle for the avocado account than on or about the 5th of a month, whether it be uh, the 5th of um, Cinco de Mayo or the Cinco de Junio or soon to be Cinco de Julio. Okay, well, this baby's this baby's about gone. Man, whew, that's all speckly. Hold on. Good. So, um, and we get these at um, we get these at Price Right in, on Main Street in Danbury, and it's not their fault. I mean, we bought these about well, we bought it after we got the Tootsie Rolls, <laughs> which had been sitting out for a year until Basil donated it. To a friend of his over in Newtown, but um, so we got um, we got these a couple weeks ago, and they are baby, they are soft, they are ready to ready to go. Okay, we gotta have a little um, avocado with chicken and tomato on uh, on some pizza, some uh, on some tortilla or uh, tamale or something um, when we wake up from this broadcast. Okay, so um. So, you remember last year, we did a couple shows about the Scottish referendum, and uh, we had a call-in from, um, a bunch of call-ins from fellows that uh, claimed to be, um, what's that guy's name that played Braveheart? Oh, yeah, Mel Gibson. So, um, so we had some call-ins from people that purported to be, and claimed to be uh, Mel Gibson, and they felt like they, um, like the Scottish should do anything they could to, um, to get rid of um, their British oppressors. And uh, the referendum failed. We covered it live. We were doing the counts on each, uh, in each voting area, and uh, it, they just couldn't muster the votes. I think they had about a 45% for, for seceding from Great Britain, and 55 against, and uh, David Cameron, the Prime Minister of Britain, pulled a real coup off and uh, got the Scottish people to uh, to stay in the British Empire and uh, along with their um, their huge oil reserves. Scotland's got apparently an economy that an economy that could pretty well um, do well on its own and doesn't really have any need for Great Britain. And they're also in favor of because of that strength of their economy and their and their oil reserves. They're they're pretty pretty hot on staying in the uh, the European Union, the EU, or, or, or as David Cameron calls it, the uh, EU. 
But uh, Cameron got them to stay. And uh, they did. And uh, so the election comes up for prime minister. And what does he do? What is, he's, he, wants to, he wants to win the election. So he tells all the, uh, the Tories, all the right-wingers, and uh, other, uh, other factions on that side of the political aisle that, are, that hate the EU and want to get out of there or never really even get into there because Great Britain still has the pound as its currency. Um, all of the other countries, um, Ireland, uh, uh, France, uh, Germany, Italy, Greece, all these countries have Spain, all these countries have um, went from their, their uh, previous um, currency to the euro. And you notice the euro is um, it's kind of a pretty coin. It's, um, it's the only one I've seen recently that has... Uh, is a rub, not a scratch or a pick. Um, that has two parts of it. It's got a, a, a coppery part on the inside, surrounded by um, a silvery part. Although neither are copper or silver, but um, it's a very, they're very attractive coins. And each country has its own version of the euro, but they're universally accepted in, in every country in Europe except Great Britain. So Cameron decides he um, he wants to play to his audience, to his space, and uh, and fight hard against Britain getting involved with uh, the European Union, or as he calls it, the EU or EU. And he he disses the Scots and says anybody that wants to get involved in the European Union, European Union, is a dick, basically. And I guess that includes um, Robert because, um, you know, we also had Robert Burns from the grave on the show. We had Mel Gibson calling in and uh, five or six people that claimed they were Mel Gibson. And one was crazier than the next, which led me to believe that at least, at least one of them probably was Mel Gibson. Maybe they all were. Maybe they all were variations on a theme. And, uh, but we also had call-ins from the, um, from the grave from, a, from a, a fine Scottish poet named Robert Burns and... Uh, he even sent us down a, a poem which we read, and uh, it was just just a great show while we were covering this Scottish uh, referendum. And uh, how are we doing for time? Um, we're going to come back, and we're going to do another show. When we go to edit it, we find out that this is not long enough. We'll, we'll do something. We'll throw something in there to fill it up. Uh, this has been Basil Buddha Cat Presents. I'm David Stevenson, Basil's co-host, interpreter, and chief gopher, and... A great Friday evening. See you Sunday morning. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away her Medicare on Wall Street. And pharma oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Meow.